Now, my hedge is, you know, how about I just stave off chronic disease as long as possible, stay as healthy as possible, stay in the game as long as possible so that if it turns out that that was for nothing, we're sitting here, it's 10 years from now, I'm in my early 60s and someone comes along and says, Peter, all that stuff you did was totally unnecessary. Yeah. You could have been eating Cheetos, drinking margaritas all day long. Sure. I have a pill that's going to make you 20 years old again. I would have no regrets. Yeah. I would be like, I don't care. I am really glad I, I did what I did. Um, but I would have regret if I put my eggs in the basket that said, I'm going to drink the margaritas all day. I'm not going to exercise. I'm going to wait for the exercise pill to come along. And it just doesn't come along. Sure. I also think we just have to, you know, accept, you know, one of my favorite thought experiments. Um, I forget. I was talking about this with a friend a couple of weeks ago. So if you just consider modern human history, right? We're just talking about 250,000 years. I don't, let's, let's forget everything that came before Homo sapiens. You go back in time 250,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago, 150,000, you do this in like 50,000 increments until you hit 10,000 years ago and then 5,000 years ago and then 2,500 years ago and then 1,000 years ago, da, da, da. And you go in and you ask them to predict the future letting them see everything that's happened before. Cause of course that would be a difficult thing to do most points in time. They don't even know anything beyond there. To like, what's the future? Yeah. You're like, oh shit, I went back too far. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's sort of like, it would be impossible to imagine because the pace of change during that 250,000 years was pretty much nothing, right? Then, you know, 5,000 years ago, we get agriculture. Um, then, you know, a couple hundred years ago, we get you know, the industrial revolution, like we really start the to get these- The first industrial revolution. Yeah, we start to get these big since. step function changes. But even if you go back in time, a hundred years. So a hundred years, we're in the roaring twenties. Life couldn't be any better. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows that there's this depression coming. Nobody knows what technology is coming. You know, all of these things. So we couldn't predict anything. You go back in time, 40 years, I don't think anybody could have predicted what we're doing today. Ray Kurzweil successfully did. What did Ray predict? almost everything, probably about his, his 70. If you're conservative, 60 to 70% accuracy, which is wild because the baseline accuracy is zero. Yeah. Uh, and if you're if you're not conservative and you give him but a little th leeway, this was when he predicted this when? Um, throughout the 80s and 90s, he was able to predict a substantial amount of correct predictions all the way through the 2020s. And he was the almost the only person to predict the arrival of artificial general intelligence as Interestingly enough, specifically the year 2029. Um, and now there is a debate of he was probably too conservative and AGI will be here by 2027. In the early 2000s, they did a, a lot of asking questions of AI experts, people working in the space. And almost all of them said Ray was an insane person. And uh, about half of them said we could never actually create artificial general intelligence. And the other ones were like, oh, in 2100 or 2070. And uh, every five years that you ask this, everyone trends closer and closer to Ray Kurzweil's original prediction. And he's not doing magic. So earlier you said something kind of interesting. You said, uh, we started 250,000 years ago, then we got into 125, then 50, then so on. A as you said, that things get faster. Uh, progress happens exponentially quicker. But if you plot every single event on human and animal history and geological history, it all plots on the same logarithmic scale. Very, very tight clustering. And right around 2045, the line's fucking vertical. And so when I make predictions, which are not mine, I'm just parroting what other smarter people have said, of possibly getting traction on almost every kind of disease in the 2030s. This isn't the wishful thinking of a child, though mentally I'm below the average child, at least in my own heart. Um, this is something that is inevitable based on our incremental understanding and manipulation of the world. It is the most accurate type of prediction that you could make bereft of exact knowledge because it's the thing that tracks on that exponential progression. If we're pessimistic about it, we're actually estimating that things will somehow progress substantially less than they have been. Computing power is an easy one. 
that curve of computing power in the early 2020s, people were like, that's it, Moore's Law is dead. But then AI picked up the pace and it's outpacing Moore's Law like crazy, exactly on the trajectory that Ray Kurzweil was the first one, probably the best to formalize. So when I'm saying crazy shit, like we're gonna kibosh aging, we're gonna kibosh disease and all this other stuff, it's tantamount to someone in the 1930s peak depression era days to hear that in the 2020s, you can make $16 an hour working at McDonald's and that in the United States, the poorest people are the fattest. They'd be like, you're out of your fucking mind. And you're like, no, 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 it's totally true. Like I'm in the future. It's totally true. <laughs> and like, so what do you do for a living? Can you imagine describing a person in the 1930s, what you do for a living? Like, well, social media, and they're like, what's that? You're like, oh, God, how do we even put this to you? And we're still working the same physical world. We're really the same humans. But anytime we think, oh, geez, there's no way it's going to get this good, all disease eradicated. And hold on a second. When's the last time you've treated a patient with cholera? Do we have cholera in the modern Western world anymore? Yeah, I think th this is, this is um, where I'm less optimistic. No, no less, no more confident. To be clear, so sure. so I want to I want to be very clear. That, I could be wrong about all this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, but but just as a, a, a you know a point of discussion, I, my optimism is less around. Not everything you said, I agree with in terms of compute velocity, et cetera. Um, it comes down to the manipulation of biology, where I I think. Um, Certain things would need to be true to undo. So, so I'll give you a, a, a silly example, right? Do we believe that in 10 years, we will be able to take a pro, an, an egg that has been put into a frying pan, fried, the clear part has turned white and make the white part clear again? Like, do we think 10 years will bring the technology to do that? Yeah, hell yeah. And, but why? Why do we think that we'll be able to unfold proteins again? Because... Um... Google's DeepMind project just mastered protein folding last year, and this earlier this year it took the first open contracts with major pharmaceutical companies. No, no, companies I, again, I'm very to... familiar with it, but that's a yeah. very that's a that's a remarkable problem for which obviously a Nobel Prize was awarded, mm -hmm. but a very different problem. Like I'm just not sure that the entropy will allow the reversal, right? So what DeepMind did again, it's incredible sure. that they could actually take an amino acid sequence and predict the protein structure in folding. But when the protein has folded, right, which is why the egg goes from clear to white in the pan, how do we how do we undenature that? Yeah, through industrially designed enzymes, which we do not have the brain power yeah. to design. But for for which I'll put this as, as well as I can, for which in the 2030s, AI will be comically overpowered for because we think we're very complex and by our own standards, mm. we're insanely complex. But AI is so much smarter than us already in many of the relevant ways and soon to be way smarter than us to a degree that most of us have difficulty conceptualizing. I mean, just a quick analogy. Imagine explaining to your dog why the only season inside of your house is a, a light summer day. Peter doesn't know what seasons are. Its total communicative throughput involves gestures and emotions. It knows its name, it knows sit, it knows a few other things. You can't do it. It's impossible. AI, as predicted by these very simple equations, which have never steered us wrong of how smart it's going to be in 10 years, in 10 years, will be like probably several orders of magnitude smarter than us than we are than dogs. So it sounds like wishful thinking and hope. No doubt many of the comments in this will be like, this guy's an idiot lunatic. Fair play. I don't necessarily think that. They might, sure, they sure. might look I at, think they that might, some no, days about myself. They might look at me and say, Peter, you, you, you are so pessimistic. How can you be so pessimistic? Sure. Or, 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 or it's not that I'm pessimistic. It's how can you not be more optimistic? Sure. Uh, but, but nevertheless, yeah. Sure, sure. Um, the solutions to the problems that we're seeking to systems that intelligent, should they choose to solve them, can be, uh, for lack of a better term, pedestrian in nature. And they're going to be dealing with problems that are much more complex than the re-engineering of human biology. So for me, when the raw compute and the raw understanding of how to manipulate matter and energy to get kind of any kind of shape you want at a given energy input, when that's there, 
The only question is like, are, are we going to try to do it or not? And that's where I come back to the incentives and constraints problem. The biggest hurdle to the development of advanced pharmacology and genetic engineering and so on to do this kind of thing is going to be regulatory in nature, hands down. FDA, everything's off by five or 10 years. It sucks. But once AI has enough time to cook on these problems, the candidate drugs released will run through trials with just an unreal record. But why? Because if you have very not so good at things AI, that's decent. No, but like AI is going to do a great job at the first step of the process, which is what's the molecule, right? Like right now it's trial and error. It's brute force. It's super painful. Yeah. Alpha not fold, anymore right now. Right. You can't exactly. Say that Alpha fold right. changes that. Yeah. How is AI going to streamline the phase one trial where we have to prove once we have the IND? Oh yeah. No, the, no. The, it doesn't streamline it at all. It just flies through it. Like it knocks out phase one, knocks out phase two, knocks out phase three market. So you can say- Right. But phase we one get to phase two to, to phase three, it's still going to take a decade. Oh, totally. But at the end of that decade, we have super drugs hitting the market all at the same time, as opposed to the incremental process. The increments are all handled up front by the AI. And that last decade is just like, we just got to do this. Yeah. So your example would be- it's like coming up with retitrutide in 2014 yes. when we had liraglutide as yes. the first generation yes. GLP-1 that yeah. sucked. Yep. We already knew how to build retatrutide back then and we could have just done it. No one cared because the money wasn't there slash there's lots of other candidate drugs you could work That's on. That's interesting. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't really thought of that. Yeah. So, and so if the AI is powerful enough, it'll just give you candidates that are just killers right offhand. It's like, but how will it know that? Because Again, this is such a silly philosophical discussion, sure, but sure. like, didn't we kind of need to see that, okay, semaglutide was better than liraglutide, but we had to see, you could, you, I don't know if this was predictable. You had to actually see the experience to then go from semaglutide to terzepatide and realize that, oh, like maybe it's the GIP as well as the GLP that's really good. And yes, now when we look at the pipeline, it's it's different. So I, I do wonder, uh, I mean, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a very tantalizing proposition, but I wonder how much of it can be figured out through simulation, which is what yeah. would be necessary. Eventually all of it. Uh, but I'll give you the second rung of what's starting to happen now. The second rung, the first rung is like candidate drugs based on protein structure alone. And will that protein structure fold into the receptor we're targeting well enough to give us some activity? Yep. The second phase is, this sounds funny to say, but it's computationally going to be tractable quite soon, simulating every single protein in the human body and seeing how that candidate drug interacts with every single other protein. And then you just optimize the selection criteria for- yeah, dial you know, up the effect, exactly, dial down the side effect. Exactly. Are you familiar with Jeperone, aka Exua, a, a new major depressive disorder medication? No. So Jeperone, uh, the trade name is Exua, uh, is- uh, What class? Targeting it's just, uh, SSRI, I think. And it only targets the serotonin receptors in specific parts of the brain as opposed to just like, you're going to get it all. And so it has seemingly no more probability to reduce sex drive or ultra consumption of food patterns than a placebo. And that's not even developed with AI. That's just a more selective targeting. Yep. We can get almost 100 to zero ratio targeting with that phase two approach. Now you just want muscle growth and skeletal muscles only. You got it entirely AI driven. And when the first phase one participant takes that first pill, there's an almost 100% chance that they're just gonna be like, holy crap, what else do you feel? How's your blood work? Everything's totally normal because we've tested it on every single other receptor in the human body. There are definitely bumps in the road with that. It's not quite just that simple, but it's on the way there. And the last thing in the world I'd ever want to do is to think, oh, AI is over, like, every now and again, you hear like, oh, AI is overrated. It's overhyped. In my view, there is no overhyping AI, short of like, it's magical and it's going to be here tomorrow and we'll never die. Fine. Okay. It's a few years too, too off center. But, um, the power of computing all of this and then using that computation to test it in the human body and getting iterative loops on that is to me not to be understated. And 
if somehow biology is somehow magically intractable for older folks or whatever, um, I think that um, scanning of the human brain and brain machine interface and mind uploading is going to happen by the 2040s anyway. And then it doesn't matter what the hell your body's like, you live in the cloud. Yeah, I've thought about that a bunch. I'm not sure I like it. Why not? <laughs>